Welcome to the College of Knowledge. This time, Moonshoot. With over 10 years of experience in fintech, she is the current CEO of EcoCash and is the youngest chief executive to run a mobile money business in Africa. Here is Natalie Jabangwe. Now, I wasn't really sure about, our, you know, how to go about this because it was about your sharing tonight, about your leadership experience and uh, the journey that you might have traveled and how that might inspire our incumbent business leaders who are here and also entrepreneurial startup business leaders who are here this evening. But the truth of the matter is I don't consider myself to be somebody with a lot of experience. So I decided to share the journey of a possibly an inexperienced leader, a moon shooter, right? How many moon shooters are in here tonight? If you show by your raising of hands, you probably think you are not experienced enough uh, to be captain of a ship and that you are just trying your hand at it and trying to figure out what your capabilities are. If you were like me, I would like you to raise your hand. Right, so this talk tonight is probably for people that are moon shooting. Moon shoot leadership is the kind of leadership that is becoming common in this 21st century. You hear about all the innovative, disruptive companies that shape our world today. The WhatsApps, uh, the Facebooks, the Angry Birds, the Instagrams, etc. Companies that in 24 days wreck around and become million dollar acquisition companies. The gestation period today for growing businesses has shortened astronomically. It has come down from what we have typically known in the telco industry of having a gestation period of building a business onwards and upwards of 20 to 25 years and down to a gestation period of people who build them in their garages, in their back doors, and they become multi-million dollar businesses. What is going on? Have the rules of leadership changed, or do we have something for this century that is known as moonshot leadership? Now, moonshot leadership, in my view, is how you future-proof yourself. Whether you are leading an organization or whether you are running your own life, you are still a leader, or whether you have a business idea or thinking about launching yourself to the next level, you need a little bit of moonshoot. And how do we moonshoot in volatile environments? And I don't think there's any such thing as a non-volatile environment. I think most environments are volatile, and we'll talk about that a little bit further when we go to looking at context, etc. I think the volatility is just in the difference of where you are. If it is here, you might have a uh, November 2017 event, and that is kind of, you know, your environment. And if you are in the UK, you're grappling as a business person or as a citizen with the likes of Brexit. And if you are in the United States, you are grappling with the advent of Trump. So it's not any better anyway. The context of volatility, the context of it is just different. So. The environments that we live in today, particularly in this 21st century, extremely complex, peculiarly uncertain, volatile, and ambiguous, no matter where you are. To survive this kind of complex environments, and they're everywhere in the world, as I said before, you've got to be anti-fragile. You've got to have a moonshoot DNA that is a part of you. That means you dare to look ignorance in the face. You are not ashamed of human weaknesses. You grow when you are exposed to shocks, to disorder, to stresses and risks. And you know that structural changes are required along the way. So we have learned in our experience, and clearly we're a best in case example, and you might want to listen or two as to how we do it. And some of the firm values that we believe in is that we always overshoot and we always overcompensate. We go over and above the mandate of excellence, and that is extremely critical. Again, Mrs. Divine Vukula talked about that. Being best in class, Trevor talked about knowing that you are unique, and that you are irreplaceable, and that there's nobody who is like you. 
When we wake up, when my team wakes up at EcoCash, we believe that we are the best mobile financial services provider, not only in Zimbabwe, but in the world. And I charge my team to believe that. It doesn't matter that we're in Zimbabwe, but with so far as our challenges and whatever else is concerned, we be the best. Joe again talked about measuring the context, measuring the risk. While we believe that we're the best, we are very, very clear about hazards that exist. We're very, very clear that the banks want us locked out. We don't rest on our laurels. We don't wake up thinking that because we are 3.5 times bigger than banks with 8 million customers and banks that only have between them all the 19 banks, about 2 million customers, do we rest on our laurels and think that we've got them? Forget it. We are watching every single moment. About a possible response that might dislodge us. About a possible something that might come in the way and displace us. So we are constantly innovating and constantly being the best so that at any given point in time, should the odds shift left, right, center, west, wherever you want to be, we must be pivoted. We innovate, requires additional quantities of willpower, motivation, fast failure experiences, introspection, that introspection that was being talked about. And I say to my team all the time, and if anybody had accompanied me, I would ask them, where did I pitch it wrong tonight? Did I overspeak? Did I not overspeak? We suffer feedback big time. Particularly from our customers, a lot of the products and services that we have launched, that people think are game changers. I'll tell you about the swipe into EcoCash that has the banks running mad, etc. You know, I went to Chitumbiza Hospital and somebody realized that I was the CEO for EcoCash. And this customer just expressed sheer anger and said, why can't I just swipe with my bank card? Doesn't it make sense? My bank has not connected me onto a bank to wallet, etc. And then I also had another friend who constantly, they banked with uh, one of the banks here in Zimbabwe, and they constantly said to me, but my bank won't get connected. I should just swipe. And we have just entered the cash crisis. And I went to my team and I said, the customers are seeing a hazard. And the hazard is that there's little cash. And the customers are asking if they can do this with their bank card. And the team was like, no, it breaks the bank rules, etc., whatever. I said, watch. These customers are quicker than we think. PayPal, you load with your bank card. Apple Pay, you load with your bank card. Why can't EcoCash do it? Nothing is future-proof forever. And nothing cannot be broken. We must break the rules. And we <coughs> broke the rules. For the first time in Africa, we are the only fintech that allows you to swipe your card into your mobile money wallet. Anything can be broken. The rules can be changed. Anybody, as Sir Christopher Columbus said, can get to the moon and explore the galaxies. That is the kind of thing we do. So thanks to the appetite for risks and errors. As a certain class of people, we need to encourage, you know, we actually do innovate for the nation for taking risks and errors, whatever you want to call them, to actually make sure that we make things go and we make things happen. But one of the most important things is to be authentic, and this one particularly as a leader, who I found really painful, is the introspection journey again that was talked about. It's really thinking about things and going backwards and saying, did I do my best? Where are my weaknesses? Am I doing it right? Getting a lot of feedback. Feedback is gold dust. Don't travel without feedback. We are not masters of everything, and we do not have a monopoly of knowledge. So if in doubt, get the facts. Stick to the facts. Don't close over mistakes. If somebody walks up to you and says you've made a mistake, think about it. 99.99% .99 of the time, there's a possibility that they're wrong, but there is a 1% chance that actually they could be correct. So it's worth listening to. And so take the necessary action immediately when you get feedback. And you could hold your position, but just maybe somebody could be correct. So be open, you know. Business and people that thrive under pressure will inevitably last a long time, particularly if they're authentic, particularly if they take feedback from other people because feedback helps them to grow. So here are some of our moonshoot examples. Our, in 2013, we launched what is called the tap and pay. And you know, the tap and pay card, if you, it was very popular and famous. 
People loved it, but it didn't scale up. But look, we're cool with it. We learned from a lot of the mistakes and the market wasn't ready. But the bottom line was that we were the first in Africa to launch the tap and pay card. But guess what happened what, when that didn't work and we realized that the market was having a problem with the chips, etc., or whatever. Yesterday we launched what is called the scan and pay. We realized people can't do the tags, etc. We had to go for something that people can use out of their smartphones to take a picture and the payment is instant, the QR pay. But if we hadn't done that and failed in 2013, so I tell my team all the time, fail fast. The quicker we fail, without being reckless, of course, the faster we get to where we're gonna get to. We launched what was called the debit card, and we were the largest provider of debit cards before the Forex issues. And because of the Forex issues, we launched what was called the RAND wallet, because we're anticipating that the market might go RAND. We still don't know which way the market will go, but whatever comes, because we've got the right wallet, we're ready for any currency. We saw the hazard, we never ignored the facts, we never closed over them, our run wallet didn't take off, that's fair enough, but we're ready for another currency. <laughs> so overshooting, overcompensating, taking risk, calculated risk, of course. And the structures that are really important, and again, John uh, we talked about, some form of structure, huh? Lean, keep it lean, don't keep it complicated, opaque. Start by the mindset, set some goals, go after those goals, little by little. We love risk, calculated hopefully by my team. I'm like, guys, we haven't failed in a long time. Something's wrong in this organization. What's going on? If we don't fail, I'm like, and if we're not in trouble, I'm like, guys, something's happening. We're constantly in trouble by the banks, by the customers, by the regulator. If everything is going on, if everything's too comfortable, we don't want to be too comfortable. You don't want to be kind of uncertain. How's it going to go? Then we know we're going to moonshot. We're not resting on our laurels. We love information. We inspire for information. We want to know what's going on there, that, this, or the other. We're cognitive. That awareness that Joe talked about. We're very cognitive people. We read. We read a lot. And one of the things about my moonshot stories in closing was that when I took over this role, one of the things I actually really didn't want to do is come back to uh, Zimbabwe. I had been out of the country for about 16 years. I left at the age of 18 to study in the UK. And our um, group CEO in our company asked if I could come. And, you know, I mean, I was like, man, Zimbabwe, it was like, guys, you know. But, there's always something about information. I always say get the information. So I took an opportunity to come and check out what it was like, uh, whether it might even work uh, you know, or not. Give it a chance. So sometimes you actually, there are opportunities there, sometimes because you're just scared or because of the perception, because of what people said. And one of the things that I saw having come to Zimbabwe and having worked for blue chip companies Major investment banks in the country, I don't think there's any of the major investment banks whose platforms or systems were on the square mile in London I hadn't set up in my 10-year career in uh, financial technology services was that the people I met here were just as smart. And I was sure we would build a world-class business out of Zimbabwe. In fact, I was shocked by the level of talent that I'd interacted with during my uh, scurrying week to find out whether I wanted the job or not the way that the people engaged, the way the people challenged. I was actually surprised that we were not, the, like what? This cannot be a leading fintech company. I was like, I saw what people couldn't see. So don't ignore information. Again, the mindset, I saw what people couldn't see. One of the things I was clear about was that we we're gonna build a world-class company. I knew we were gonna deliver a world-class company. A hundred million dollar revenue business, that I was clear we could do. And we are the uncontested recipient of the Mobile World Congress Global Award 2017, which went to the best mobile payments provider in the world. That went to Google. <laughs> you see it, you think it, you believe it, you execute it, you can do it. So, uh, in closing, that was my talk tonight on Moonshot people, Moonshot leaders, Moonshot circumstances, and I hope that out of this evening tonight, we will have enough Moonshot people to take this country to another level in the space that we're in. Thank you. <laughs>